Welcome to part two of this overview on irrigation. We will begin with the various moisture stresses that occur during the growing season, either too little irrigation water or too much, but first an important factor in designing any watering system. In designing an irrigation system, the ability to apply the necessary amount of water is influenced by the evapotranspiration rate of the turf, or as it is commonly called ET. ET is comprised of the transpiration rate of the turf grass plants and the evaporation rate of the soil. ET rates are influenced by wind, temperature, air humidity, radiant energy, and the soil's water holding capabilities. And if moisture stress is severe enough, turf loss may occur. Although not enough water can cause severe turf stress, the most common problem associated with irrigation, especially in the humid temperate region, is overwatering of golf courses. A popular saying is that 50% of the golf greens are overwatered. This photograph is rather unique in that it was taken from a moving triplex greens mower. Notice the water being pushed up. In replenishing lost soil moisture, irrigation needs to be applied to account for soil infiltration rates. In this case, the water was overapplied or at a rate that caused ponding. Multiple irrigation cycles may be needed to match watering rates with soil infiltration rates. Agronomically, overwatering increases turf injury due to increased wear, causing a loss in turf density. Moist conditions and thinning can lead to disease problems and invasion of weeds like poannua. In this instance, this thin turf and wet conditions has led to an algae invasion. Algae can seal the soil surface, leading to turf decline. During high summertime temperatures, excessive irrigation or untimely rainstorms can saturate the soil, contributing to significant turf loss. Determining if and how much water to apply is dependent on many factors, including monitoring weather patterns and checking soil moisture conditions. Root zone moisture levels can qualitatively be determined by checking dew patterns and using soil probes. Soil moisture levels can also be determined with soil moisture sensing devices, and the use of visual wilting signs can trigger water applications. First, we will look at monitoring weather. Modern irrigation systems have the capabilities to monitor local weather conditions along with turf conditions. For example, wind speed, air humidity, and temperature, along with soil temperature and moisture levels, are often measured with a device similar to this one shown. These measurements can be communicated electronically back to computers and analyzed to determine potential water loss and the need for irrigation. Keeping track of weather patterns is a daily ritual. Several weather monitoring services are available that can provide real-time weather reports. Also, there are weather channels on cable television. In addition, real-time weather reports can be found on websites located on the Internet. On golf courses, signs of moisture stress include checking dew patterns early in the morning prior to mowing. Dew forms from both the condensation of water vapor in the atmosphere onto the leaf blade and gutation water which is pushed up through leaf openings called hydathodes. The larger water droplets shown here are due to gutation, while the smaller, more numerous droplets are from condensation. The presence of dew indicates soil moisture is present, while the lack of dew may be an indicator that there's some sort of moisture stress occurring. In this picture, a uniform dew pattern is present on this green. In this photograph, taken on an early summer morning, dew is present in patches, but many areas or spots lack dew and actually show early signs of wilt, denoted by the bluish color. Qualitative soil moisture levels can be often checked with a soil probe or a similar type of device. Once a core is removed by the soil probe, 
Soil moisture levels can be determined by color. If moisture is present, the soil, or in this case the sand, is a darker color. Also by rubbing the core in your hands, the core should feel moist. If it is dry or crumbly, water will be needed. Increasingly, soil moisture sensing devices are being used on golf courses. These portable devices are becoming more affordable and provide a quantitative measure of soil moisture. Wilt is a temporary state of moisture stress in the turfgrass plant. As previously mentioned, wilt appears as a bluish color and oftentimes footprinting caused by the lack of turgidity in the plants is an indicator of this moisture stress. Wilting is most obvious in early to late afternoon. Wilting can occur across large turf areas or in more isolated situations as shown here. Where most of this fairway is green and appears to have adequate moisture, along the edge wilt areas are appearing that will require watering. In this photograph, wilting is appearing along a narrow strip of turf between the green and bunker. In many instances, the areas on a greener fairway that requires water are not uniform. Although turning on a single or series of sprinkler heads is common, the risk of overwatering areas that do not require water is a concern. Hand watering, although an intensive, labor expensive, and sometimes an annoying practice to golfers, can provide a firm, fast turf by providing water to only those areas that need it. It may sound obvious, but a key to hand watering is selecting the proper nozzle that provides the proper pattern and volume of water that you would like to deliver. For hand watering purposes, a majority of irrigation systems provide quick coupling valves. Some irrigation systems allow for the removal of the pop-up sprinkler head exposing a quick coupling valve which allows for hand watering. A common watering practice is called syringing, which is defined as a light application of water to the turf. Syringing is often done by hand, but not all hand watering is syringing. With syringing, you are not attempting to make up a moisture deficit, but attempting to cool the turf through a light application of water, which cools the plant through evaporation. It's usually done in late morning or early to mid-afternoon during periods of summer stress to minimize wilt or heat stress. As a side note, a watering practice that is not related to maintaining turf is watering bunkers. If the sand gets too dry, the application of water can reduce the potential movement of sand and also enhance the playability of the bunker. Think about walking across a dry sandy beach. The sand under your feet as you walk is rather soft and r relatively unstable. Adding water firms the sand up, like walking on the beach as the tide moves out. In conclusion, the quantity and quality of water available, combined with proper programming, is one of, if not the, most important agronomic issue facing golf courses. An understanding of the factors involved in developing an irrigation system will produce a desired turf health, quality, and playability demanded by golfers.